right, we're back on Morning Line. Josh Horn's with us from Social Security. So your chance to call in, ask a question about whatever you're dealing with. You see the number on the screen. Real quick, does uh, the stock market, the ups and downs, affect Social Security in any way? And, and even to the point that there is the Social Security lockbox with all the money in it. And that money is invested to some degree in, I imagine, very conservative investments to grow. It doesn't just sit there in a bank. Could that affect the big picture? Yeah, I mean, to my knowledge, I, I don't know of anything directly. And, and the, the folks way up at the top who knows exactly how, how the trust fund, and the, when, you, when you start talking about that, I mean, I, at, the, at my level, we, we okay. only know, you know, who's coming in and who's not and, and uh, how much they're going to get. And there's not a whole lot of effect, you know, directly on, on that other than maybe there might be a few extra people who are who decide that they you know they kind of panic and say okay it's time to retire uh, <laughs> but yeah. or the other way around there might be some folks who were going to come in and retire and actually hold off so but other than that I, you know there's nothing that I see at my level and any changes gotcha okay let's uh, take some phone calls let's go uh, first to Joe Joe mm -hmm. good morning good morning Nick. hey Joe Gosh, just a quick question <clears throat> I had heard a rumor that uh, maybe the middle of this month that the, they were going to automatically adjust your tax withholding and it might affect the amount you get from Social Security or other checks. Do you know anything about that or have you heard anything about it? Well, when it comes to Social Security and tax withholding, we don't automatically withhold anything. So if somebody comes in today and they apply for benefits, we're not automatic, automatically going to withhold anything. Uh, and, and now we have a lot of folks who come in who know that they've got a lot of other income and know that they're going to have to pay taxes. And so they request to have uh, tax withholding from their Social Security. It's called voluntary tax withholding. Uh, and they tell us what percent they want, 5%, 7%, 10%. 12%, whatever you want. And so based on that, there really wouldn't be any change with how much is being withheld from your Social Security taxes or Social Security benefits. Does that make sense, Joe? Yes, yes. That uh, answers my question. All right. Thank you for your call. Good question from Joe. Let's go to mm -hmm. Fran. Hi, Fran. I guess I have a question. Okay. Sure. Oh, the uh, statement that the Social Security sends out of how much your earnings are every year, how much they sent you. Okay, I haven't received mine yet. I called them last Wednesday, and I talked to them, and they said that they would put me another one in the mail. I haven't received it yet. So I talked to them a few minutes ago. And they said it would be next week. And what I was wondering, if there is a government shutdown Friday, would that keep me from, would that delay me getting my, uh, the stuff that I need? So if you're talking about the, the benefit statement that comes out periodically. Uh, of course, yeah, the one that you was talking about. Well, now, if you're talking, they were supposed to be mailed out on, gen, on, okay. on the January. The, ta on, the tax form. Okay. Everybody I know of is from that one, but I haven't got one. Okay. Uh, so oh, the tax form. Yes, the tax form, the 1099. Okay, I which one it was. Uh, so to answer your question, uh, of course, if it's in the mail, it won't. It shouldn't be affected because the post office doesn't isn't affected by the shutdown. So you you should get uh, your 1099 if it's been mailed out. But if you called in, let's say we did shut down and on and on Friday, and you tried to call in, we wouldn't be able to send that to you because it's not considered a payment related type action uh, but it's all it's always available on the my Social security account but if you needed one mailed or, or mailed to you then uh, then we wouldn't be able to do it during a, during a shutdown but hopefully it's on its way to you yeah I hope it is because I want to go ahead and get my income tax mm -hmm. filled out right and I can't without that yep do you have a are you filing will you get a return or do you think you will owe some taxes do you I, have get, any? I get a return okay yeah well I can see why yeah. she'd like to get on that and get that going absolutely mm -hmm. so but your understanding is they're planning on sending it to you and you're just hopeful there's not that government shutdown right yes they were supposed to mail it they said they were let me out last Wednesday and I just talked to them about 20 minutes ago and they said it'll be next week and when I heard him say that there will yeah. be a government shutdown I got kind of nervous because I thought I wouldn't be able to get it because if it delayed it, then I wouldn't be able to get my income tax filled out. And I'm afraid of, you know, yeah. um, they talk about if you don't get them done early, that somebody can, you know, can uh, 
Too loud, too income tax, you not know anything about it. <clears throat> well, sure. Either way, it just means you won't get your return check uh, for a later period of time. And, and it can take a few days. Those, I believe those forms are all mailed from Baltimore, and so you know, it could take a few days to get here. I mean, that, that may be a, a normal uh, mailing time frame, so she may end up getting two. But. Oh, okay. And, but the bottom line, too, by the way, when there is a shutdown, and typically if there is, it's just two or three days, hopefully. It can be longer. Once it ends, people come back pretty quick, and it's, do the wheels start turning immediately? Or does it take a while to transition back into it? I mean, yeah, I don't, yeah. Your experience as you see it. Yeah, yeah. yeah even, I mean, last time uh, we were only shut down for a relatively short period of time, and what we saw is immediately after, we had a lot of folks coming in to see us. So you've got a mob. So we have a mob. So, you know, to answer your question, I mean, the, the specific actions don't take any less amount of time, but there is going to be longer waits and so forth. We had a few folks that came in who, who was like, why is it such a long wait today? And I said, well, you know, we, we just reopened. And yeah, so that's they, they the problem. I'll tell you what, um, that last call from Shirley was a good one because if you want to know the government shutdown, aside from affecting, you know, the government employees that sometimes are furloughed and don't know when their next check is going to come, it's, excuse me, non-essentials, which doesn't affect the paychecks. But that she's an example of how it does affect ordinary people day in and day out when there's a government shutdown. Mm -hmm. It's not just some, oh, they're shutting down again, whatever. No, it does. Here's a woman who may potentially have a delay of getting her, you know, tax form, which will delay her getting her return, which mm -hmm. she depends on. So it affects everyday people. It really does. That's why we hope those lawmakers get their act together and work something out. Not temporary, but permanent. It would be nice for the next year, and I'll believe it when I see it. Let's go to Iris. Hi, Iris. Hello. Hi, Iris. What's on your mind? Okay, I have a question. Well, maybe it's two. Um, does the government shutdown affect the so this Social Security disability checks coming to you? And uh, because the Social Security check is part of uh, our income, along with some other money. So does that mean, although the lady just said, but I need to, for my understanding, I would like to know, too, um, that will affect us being able to do our tax returns, too, right? Well, if you don't get the forms, if there's a shutdown, but it, it will but, not—it will not affect. Yeah, the payments will still keep coming. It doesn't affect your Social Security disability or anything. No, those those will still be mailed to you just like always. Oh, okay. So it's just a Social Security check. Yes, yes, that's right. If okay. and that no, not Social Security checks. It's just your your tax form. Yeah, the tax form that gets mailed out if you need a replacement. I have the tax form. We got our tax well, name. Yeah, you, you should be fine then. But it's, I tell you, my check is not supposed to come to next week. <laughs> You'll the get it. Social Security disability check doesn't come to next week. Yeah, you'll get it. I, you know, I'm glad. That's fine. We've said that, but people hear just certain things. And so, yeah, those checks will mm -hmm. not be disrupted, right, Josh? That's correct. Not at all. The only thing that might be disrupted is the 1099s, and many of those have already been sent out. This, this woman mm -hmm. already has it, mm -hmm. right? Right. So, yeah, just want to reemphasize, your checks will not be affected. Okay, disability, regular Social Security, you name it, right? Mm -hmm. All of it. Right. Okay. Let's go next to David. Hi, David. Uh, yes. Hey, what's on your mind, Dave? I got a question. I'm a ex-Marine, military, disabled, 80%, and I get all my uh, doctors and all that through the VA, everything. Now, and my Social Security, I get Social Security, but I get Medicaid. Is it all right to let go of that Medicaid and just stay with my with the VA hospitalization? Because I, I can go anywhere and I'll have that covered with me for the rest of my life. What do you think about that? So when you talk about Medicaid, that's... Is that, is that the one that's connected to Social Security? Is that no. Some kind of Medicare, Medicare or something like that? Yeah. Medicare is connected to Social Security, and that's what you get uh, after a couple of years of being disabled. Uh, and, and the Part A, the hospital insurance, is free. Uh, so you really wouldn't want to. I pay a hundred dollars every. I think it's every month. Yeah, and then the Part B is is about a hundred and thirty dollars a month or so. Well, that's the one because I'm getting everything through the VA free of charge and everything, and I get paid and so forth. Right. So and you're saying should he he would like to save that hundred and thirty dollars, <laughs> not pay for that, and he gets right. it all through the VA. Now you want to make sure that you know if something goes south with the VA, you know he still has this access. What do you think? Well, and the, the issue is is that if you ever have to have that that Medicare Part B, if you ever have to enroll in it, and you didn't have it all those years that you were supposed to have it then you'll get penalized 10 percent for every year that you didn't have it. So if 
Uh, 12 years goes I'm by and something... With the VA, full coverage and everything. Okay, and you're yeah. confident in that. Well, and that, that... Well, uh, they sent me a letter, I'm uh, 80%, 83% covered on everything, and I can go to any other state, and if I go to a hospital, just tell them that I'm, I'm a military, and the hospital themselves, they'll pay for that too. And the other thing I would do is talk to the VA because a lot of times, uh, depending on the insurance and the coverage, they require you to have Medicare. Mm -hmm. And so if you drop that and they turn around and say, wait a minute, you know, you violated this provision, yeah. you know, you could run into some problems there. So you need well, to be the, very, the very thing careful. Is the past 20 or 30 years, I've never used Medicare or whatever you call that. Mm -hmm. I never used it, only the VA. Okay, and yet yeah. you were paying for it. I was paying. Yeah, the $100 a month. Right. I was yeah. paying for it. But yeah. then I noticed, I, my wife said, well, yeah. you got it all this time and you never used it. And you got the VA, they cut you 100% because mm -hmm. you're disabled. Yeah. A PSD, what do you call that, Agent Orange and all that stuff. You're covered. You don't have to worry about that. I, that's what I'm trying to find out. Is okay. that correct? And I'd highly recommend you call and talk to the VA to make sure that there isn't some kind of provision that they require you to have the Medicare Part B. And so, so, and what I can tell you is, is that you don't have to have Part B, uh, but if you ever need it, and I, I don't know what the scenario would be that you would need it, but I, I, you know, you you would be penalized for not having it, however many years that you you, you should have had it or would have had it. Yeah. I think David, if I was in your shoes, I think you're asking a great question. Mm -hmm. You've never used it. I think Josh laid it out for you. You don't have to have it, so you can drop that. But I think he makes a really good point. Before you do anything on it, something as important as your benefit here. You heard it from Social Security where it's your call if you want to have it. You need to go check with your VA and just double check. The same folks who have said you're covered 100% say, listen, this is my situation. I've been paying all this for Medicare and I don't use it and I get benefits from you. Can you tell me, is there any reason I should continue to pay for Medicare Whereas I could use that $100 for something more for my family and be full-time on the VA benefit. And ask them and be clear that that doesn't in any way jeopardize your VA benefit before you cancel it. And, and if they say, no, you know what, you're good for the rest of your life, heck yeah, I'd cancel it. You mm -hmm. can do a lot more with $100 a month and pay it for something you're not using, but make sure you check it before you do, because we don't want to steer you in the wrong direction. I, you need to check with the VA first, just to be sure it doesn't do anything to jeopardize your coverage. But I would definitely look into it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I think he asked a great question. Good for him. All right, let's go next to D. Hi, D. Are you there, D? Yes. Hey, D. What's on your mind? I want to know about <clears throat> disability. We, uh, our, uh, our disability was cut off, and I didn't understand why, but I went and checked it out, and they said it was because I had, they had been sending me information to upgrade or update my information for my disability. So what do I do now to go about getting my disability started back? Because I haven't been receiving any information in the mail, any letters or nothing. Yeah, I, I, so that's a great question. We do uh, medical reviews. Uh, we do a lot of medical reviews every year as part of the integrity side of Social Security, making sure that people are getting paid and that you know that they haven't made any improvement or haven't improved to the point where they don't need Social Security anymore. Uh, but what happens is people might move, and especially with direct deposit, you may forget to tell us that you moved because the money keeps coming, and then all of a sudden we have to do, because we have to do these reviews every three, five, or seven years, depending okay. on your condition. And so three years, five years goes by, we send out the forms, and we get it back undeliverable, and we might try to, you know, we've got a couple of sources we can look for trying to, try to find you, but if we can't find you, then we have to put you into a suspense status until we can find, you know, figure out where you're at. Uh, and so it sounds like maybe you're in that situation. So what you need to do is call or come by uh, and get, and so that you can fill out those medical review forms and then we can go ahead and put your benefits back and pay while we review, review your case. Okay, so that's, it's that simple. I mean, it, fortunately at this point, she doesn't have to go through the whole application process again for being reclassified as disabled. She just needs to go and fill out those forms, mm -hmm. updating her condition. So it's not too late. 
but you got to go do that. Mm -hmm. So go explain to them at the office what she can go by the office. Yeah, and we've got offices in Nashville or Madison, uh, Murfreesboro, Gallatin, wherever you're living at. You can go to your just your local office and let them know, hey, I believe my benefits have been either uh, stopped or suspended, and uh, I believe it's because of the medical review, and they can look that up, and they'll know pretty quickly, okay, yeah, this is the situation. Yeah. Here's your forms. And what I recommend is I would sit there in the lobby and, mm -hmm. and fill them out the best Good. you can. Don't leave uh, and then hand them right back to the person and that way they can go ahead and, and get you back into pay. Now that's assuming that, it, that it's that, that suspense reason. Now we also have a lot of folks who the medical, you know, when they do their medical review it comes back and says, hey you've improved, <coughs> we're stopping your benefits. And you do have appeal rights in those situations. You might get that letter and say, what are they talking about? I, don't, I haven't improved at all. I don't mm -hmm. know what they're talking about. Uh, and so you have appeal rights just like you do at the initial level uh, where you can send it back for reconsideration and even go to, the, to a, a hearing to talk to a judge uh, in those situations. Okay, just curious if she does do what you suggested, and I'm sure she will, fill that out and then after you examine the, the medical records do you come to the conclusion, yes, she is still every mm -hmm. bit as disabled as she was. Is there a chance she can get those missed checks back too, or does she just get where it's reinstated forward? Yeah, if it's a, just a suspended because we don't know where you're at, you, you at <coughs> your benefits haven't stopped. We're just holding them, trying to figure out where you're at, oh. so you can get those that money so back. So you would conceivably get a, a lump sum um, of for how many checks you've missed, along with getting you back on the normal pay schedule. Mm -hmm. Definitely take care of that, ma'am, and explain to them. Uh, who knows? Uh, it could be a clerical error. It could be that you moved. They didn't know how to find you. But the bottom line is your money's there. It's on hold. You just need to reassure them that you are still disabled. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's take a break on that note. When we come back, David, Michelle, Sean, and others, if you want to jump in, Josh is here to answer your questions. 737-7587, right after this. This is a Storm 5 HD weather update.